Hello, Theo. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. clearly. Okay, I was. I, I just started a little later because um, I, I I had to sneeze. <laughs> That's okay. It was a little. Uh, yeah, it was funny. Let's say let's put it that way. <laughs> nice, nice. So, uh, how are you doing? I'm very well, very well. Here, just went through the uh, the social media channels, and now it's time for you to take over. I believe. <laughs> uh, yeah. Market so it was we're a little bit retail sales this week and uh, the cpi in the us a little bit uh... i i have to say i'm i'm still <laughs> so surprised to see uh, us equities especially so stable um yeah. but but there's a feeling some something in my gut tells me yeah. uh the weekly close won't be as nice as some people uh might want it to 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 be probably yeah. especially i think on, on monday there's a, um, a bank holiday in the us no it's it's um, president's day so uh yeah. us equities are closed and so just just imagine though you're looking now at the numbers inflation coming in hotter than expected as we will see in a few minutes here in the webinar uh retail yeah. says great uh, yesterday was ppi i think um, and then you see now markets rolling over and you wonder, yeah. hmm, shall I keep the position over uh, over the weekend? And then like a domino effect and not really sure. I, I, somehow I'm, holding, seems... I'm holding two trades. I scale you into the pound, uh, pound US dollar this week. I had a losing trade on the pound Australian dollar, but I still hold good trades on the on the pound US dollar. But pff, who knows? We will see how so, they. So, so you're you're short session. then. So you're yes you're, yes yes, yeah. yes yes okay. Um, well, and you know, I I mean I like a dollar JPY right now yeah. on the long side. Um, okay, after, that's I think I think it was um but for quite a while already. So one hundred thirty. 13150 or so that I think that yeah. was a a spike high um we saw in mid January um around the the BOJ and uh, yeah. I was like well if we if we can break this level so it was it took some time but finally we took off um and we held um quite nicely above that level we we flushed below 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 yeah. below and now we have um all fundamental checks and then taking it off at least for I think a retest of 200 SMA is somewhere around 136 37 in this region yeah, so dollar long. <laughs> Absolutely. So can't wait to listen to your information. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. So um hello and um I welcome everyone here uh in, in, in today's um uh trading spotlight webinar. Um we want to have a look at inflation and uh, most recently uh, numbers were released. You probably have seen it. Most likely you have seen it. That was already on um, um, Tuesday. In addition to that, as uh, Theo mentioned, it's not just um, uh, it wasn't just uh, the the um, inflation data, but also retail says yesterday we had PPI, so producer price index. We will see. Um, that's not uh, um, um, to underestimate. Let's say numbers came in um, hotter than expected, still below what the pre um, 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 pre month not. It's not the pre month. It's uh, the month earlier presented us. Um, and, um, but the last month was revised higher. So, and there are several signs that this, um, let's say cooling down of inflation, which we have seen now taking uh, place over the course of the last uh, months is probably about to see at least see kind of a, let's call it stall out. And this stall out makes it unlikelier that the Fed will be as dovish at as the market expected the Fed to be, in addition to not just the very strong jobs release um, or jobs data we, we saw um, earlier this month already on the 3rd, um, as you may be aware of, because you followed the webinars here and we covered this in live, um, with a, with, with live action on the live market uh, conditions. In addition to that, there's also retail sales coming in stronger than expected. We can also have a look at these. Um, and so... Long thing short, um, inflation stays um, the the most important topic right now. And it, as I already said um, to Theo several minutes ago, so it's very very interesting to see that at least as of now, equities haven't yet um, uh, reacted, or at least not reacted the way you should 
equities to to react on a more hawkish stance or um the dovish stance being priced out right now so that's usually something which should bring um, um equities under under pressure you see that the us dollar is um I'm catching a bit you see that gold is um it's not really falling off a cliff but as i played um, um last week here together with you and formulated the short bs you see that this plays out too because this is what you expect to happen and you also expect equities to come down right now they are not coming down but again, we have a um, prolonged um, weekend now. We um, are waiting the, the President's Day and, and thus um, market participants are probably looking into a longer um, a weekend than usually. And and in addition to that, they, there's some people potentially um, uh, getting cold feet right now with uh, the macro data pointing to a more restrictive stance from the uh, US Central Bank. So... Long thing short, first of all, the risk disclaimer. Um, please be aware that everything I present to you here um, is for educational purposes only. So it could be, as last week, for example, that we make a trade a topic or how to trade the markets right now. Right now, probably, um, it's it's also very interesting to have a look at um, um, single stocks in this case, like Tesla. Um, and potentially, we are, we are about to see um, a drop lower after the recent run higher. And um, especially if we drop below 190, a deeper corrective move could be on the way somewhere around, I don't know, 75, 180s or something like that. But long thing short, if I make any trade a topic here or um, how to game plan a trade and, and formulate a trading setup, please be aware that if you take the trade, you're fully responsible um, of all um, um, things following that. So it's uh, that that you, you bear all responsibility in case of losses um, and trading involves risk. So please be aware of that. Um, Education purpose only, so you get an idea of how to think through a trade, how to formulate a trade hypothesis, but don't take any trades and duplicate them um, without evaluating the situation yourself before you take the trade. Um, in addition to that, uh, you find the full risk disclaimer on the webpage, admiralmarkets.com, for further details. I think I don't need to um, uh, introduce um, admirals any further. I think uh, Theo already did an awesome job here on this um, um, front. And so let's dive right into the topic of today's um, webinar. So what is inflation? Answering the question first and then taking it from there. So um, it's not the first event um, around inflation. So some of you might be already aware of that. If you're completely new, Hello, welcome, and uh, let's here answer these questions. What is inflation? And then taking it from there, use the theoretical knowledge and um, um, use it for, for um, 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 jumping into the real world and the, the current environment in which we find ourselves in. So in economics, inflation is a general increase in the prices of goods and services in an economy. So that means if prices rise, inflation picks up. If prices drop, there's usually a deflationary pressure. And that's a very, very rough way to, to um, uh, define inflation. So uh, that's already the next bullet point, as you can see. When general prices level rises, each unit of a currency buys fewer goods and services. So that means if um, the prices of a good rise, while you don't have more money, due to, for example, a higher a salary or getting um, a paid from your employer or something like that, well, you can buy fewer goods. So, or put it differently, if you go to the supermarket, you will see that um, uh, the stuff you will buy with, let's say, 200 euros right now is far less um, of what you bought with 200 euros, let's say 10, 15 years ago, because there is a constant... Um, 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 a loss of purchasing power in the money you have in your bank account. That's, what, for example, one of the reasons why you should um, not just think about trading, but investing in general, probably from a longer perspective, um, because if you invest in a company um, who's producing the goods you are consuming here um, in the, in the, or you buy um, in the supermarket or you buy um, in a coffee shop like Starbucks or something like that, it's um, always a very good idea to uh, invest some of your available funds and, and your, your savings in stocks if it suits your overall risk profile, certainly, but um, to invest them there because what companies usually do is they forward the price increases they face terms of producer prices. So let's say Starbucks has higher costs for buying um, 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 
coffee, let's say, um, and and beans in this case, um, coffee coffee beans in this case, uh, they 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 produce the coffee with them. Well, what they will usually do is they will forward the increase in uh, their 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 producing uh, producer prices. Um, they will forward it to you, and you will pay it as the consumer. So it's kind of it's well, you can really think of um, uh, investing in stocks as kind of an inflation hedge to some extent. We we can perfectly understand that. You've, we've seen the same thing happening. For example, taking Tesla um, as, a, as a perfect example. Right now, you probably have seen, it's not just this, this massive run higher, but also the sell-off, this, this falling off a cliff over the course of the month of uh, December. And um, then at the beginning of January, beginning of the year, there was some price cuts taking place. So Tesla was cutting prices, and that was um, resulting in an initial flush lower, but then the, the the stock caught a bit and we saw a sharp rise and that was the um, um initial um a move higher and then it to some extent um so in kind of a reinforcement loop and people were like okay we'll find the bottom and most of um retail traders especially in the us what they usually do is instead of buying the physical stock itself um they are buying options call options here sometimes far out of the money. And then uh, you see still the sellers of these options um, um, facing the problem of um, being hatched just in case the stock trades to the level so that you can successfully, um, um, what's the word for this? In Germany, it's ausüben. Uh, Exercise. That's exactly exercise. You can exercise the option. Um, for example, saying you you bought it with a strike price of say 140, and then the stock is trading 160. So there's a difference of 20 bucks, um, and you exercise it, um, and that means you can buy the stock for 140, um, and or respectively, you you have the right to buy it for 140, and the seller of the option. Um, has to sell it to you for 140, even though he has to buy it in the um, 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 in the, at the stock exchange for 160. So there's a difference of 20 bucks in this case, and this difference um, is um, um, a profit for you, but a massive loss for for the seller of the option. Which means um, he to, to prevent um, to happen this or, or him to to lose an extraordinary amount of money. In case of options, we are talking about one option um, 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 refers to 100 Tesla stock. So that means the difference of of uh, 20 bucks one option alone means two thousand dollar difference so now multiply this by ten thousand uh and then we start to talk about um, um real money quite quickly so that being said now this is what i mean with reinforcement in this case coming back to inflation and the price increase we've seen here in tesla I'm sorry, the, the reduction. Well, you might probably wonder why they do that, because especially right now with the producer prices rising and, and there's more energy involved, or let's say not energy involved, but there's more cost involved to produce a car. How can they cut prices? Well, that depends on how great your margin is, right? So if you're capable of producing a very um, um, competitive good to um, um, uh, for, for a price um, and have a margin of, let's say, 30%. It's a gross margin here in this case. And you can say, well, I can cut prices easily by 10%. Um, my gross margin will naturally shrink to, let's say, 20%, but I'm still profitable. Um, that's something which um, weighs on your competition because now the competition um, um, is looking at a big problem because you are the market leader. So if we talk about electric vehicles, um, you don't need ads, you don't need promotion, you don't need marketing to, to think about Tesla um, um, as the place to be, as an electric vehicle, let's say. So that being said, well, what does it mean? Well, it means nothing more than the competition um, has to well, they have to invest to to be on the on the um, on the same level, being at the same level in terms of being visible. <clears throat> But in addition to that, they also need to have a high enough gross margin uh, to stay profitable. Uh, the, the problem is if now your competitor, the biggest competitor, the biggest player in this market is cutting prices aggressively, it also bites into your gross margin because to stay competitive or to stay ahead with the lower price, you need to cut prices too because else the product here from or the market leader's product gets cheaper and thus more attractive to buyers which will then naturally shift over to, to, to his product.
that's usually what will happen um and and so especially with inflation staying high and probably with you not being capable of scaling at the pace as tesla for example scaling right now producing cars with such a high gross margin you face trouble because now what you will see is you can forward these price cuts to your customers which means you're losing customers to in this case tesla who just cut prices so that being said then means that the cut in prices is offsetting or is offset by the um, um, higher revenue or more sold cars in this case. This is, by the way, something to keep an eye on, especially in the terms of the next um, um, quarters, because this could play out um, massively for, for Tesla, um, especially in, right now with this with this dip. So to be honest, um, short term, I'm waiting for the dip, but longer term, I'm looking for um, a sharper bounce and a sharp and deep run back above 200 and the 200 SMA, which we can be found somewhere around 230 or something like that. So I'm very positive when it comes to Tesla, but this is, well, you can see that inflation weighs heavily. And right now, for example, inflation and as inflation picked up, well, it's weighing on the gross margin of bigger companies, also bigger companies, but especially smaller ones, and especially those who were not yet profitable. Because in addition to that, to fight inflation, well, what does a central bank do? Well, they they hike rates, as the Fed did already, to bring inflation down. Because um, if you bring inflation down, that usually means that companies are more likely to uh, produce at a um, 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 profitable level with, with, or with a higher gross margin, which will naturally increase in in these companies to say, well, we are profitable, more profitable, which means we have more money to invest in new infrastructure. That means we create jobs. So that also is giving then an overall positive impulse on the overall economy. And it's um, 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 then showing, 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 showing signs of economic growth overall. So that's the reason why a central bank is fighting inflation and trying to hold um, 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 inflation under control. So this is a, a longer story to, to get a bigger picture here. Um, but um, coming back to inflation and the definition of inflation, especially. So inflation erodes the purchasing power of a bond's futures cash flow. So we are looking here at bonds and, and, and financial products, but um, in general, you also understanding how this directly affects if you, if you have to pay more to produce a good or if you have to pay more to consume a good and and your your overall salary or money you have in your pocket stays the same um well at the end of the day you will have less to 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 save or less to invest or you can afford this product and then you need to to um, um go to another product or um leave this product out of your um um, um schedule for being bought over the weekend let's say um so simply speaking, the higher the current rate of inflation and the higher the expected future rates of inflation, the higher the yields will rise across the yield curve as investors will naturally say, well, we demand now more and higher yield to compensate for the inflation risk. This is something you could easily also use here um, to say for a company saying, well, the higher inflation, the higher the costs for us to produce a good, the higher the price has to be. Um, so that we are compensated for the higher costs we have, we face here to produce the good, simply speaking. So that was the theory. Now let's have a look at where we stand right now. Um, we have seen an explosion here in prices. And, and what do you see here, by the way? In blue is the inflation rate in the US. And here in uh, black, the black dotted line is um, the producer prices. Um, and you can see they go hand in hand. So if one rises, the other raises. Interestingly, you can see that the, that the black dotted line increased earlier and then consumer prices rose after that. So it's kind of an um, 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 inflation in this case. It's kind of a lagging indicator to some extent. So you, we are using producer prices here. Certainly that makes sense because um, producer have to pay higher prices to produce a good, which will then be forwarded to, and which means with a lag, there will be um, um, a price increase being seen here among consumers too. But first of all, the producer has to... to um, pay higher prices first. And this is something then you can see here with producer prices, respectively producer prices change. So what we've seen now is that there was a rollover 
already taking place in the early 2022. But, well, you probably make long thing short. Why did this happen? Um, well, it's very simple because if you flood markets with liquidity, as central banks did following the great financial crisis in 2008, especially not just uh, the Fed, but also the ECB and also uh, the Bank of England and Bank of Japan and Bank of Canada and so on and so forth. Um, and there's uh, um, um, zero yields um, 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 policy you follow. So something we call ZERP, it's um, zero interest rate policy. There's also NERP. NERP is negative interest rate policy. So you really force, um, for example, banks lend out money. That's something which we saw, especially here in Europe with the ECB. So uh, you were forced to um, um, invest your money or not having it in the bank account. Um, so I, I have a story with a, uh, with someone who sold a house. So with the, with the um, boom in the housing market, um, he was someone like a millionaire like sold his house and and said well I don't have kids anymore I have kids but but they um um and they have no their own lives I don't need such a big house with my wife I'm I'm buying a smaller one so he's selling his house and then I mean for a period of something like 2 or 3 months he had over 1 million euros um, um in his bank account so and just imagine the following happening so on a friday morning you're sitting there sipping your coffee reading the newspaper and then your phone rings and it's the bank the bank tells you um hello mr so and so um, we have a problem. Uh, okay. And he says, well, what is the problem? The problem is you have too much money in the bank. And this is something which is kind of weird, to be honest, because um, you will probably wonder, how can you have too much money in the bank? Well, if you're getting, if you're getting uh, punished for having money at the central bank, because in this case, um, so what a bank does is, I mean, they keep the money in the account, but first of all, they use this liquidity, which is available, and have to deposit it somewhere else. Um, for example, at a central bank, if they can hand it out and, and lend it to someone as a loan or something like that. And if you're getting punished for that, well, it costs the bank a lot of money uh, to keep money at the central bank at this time. So that means they will tell you, well, you can't keep the money here because we w don't want to give this money to the central bank. I mean, it's very roughly speaking. I don't want to get too technical here with or technical, but this is like the idea behind this. And this is what I mean with NERP and negative interest rate policy. So if you do this long enough, um, you start to, um, um, well, you, you're, you're building a problem longer term because an inflation is not an issue as long as there's enough goods being produced, respectively, there's no real, let's, let's call it a need um, um, uh, to, to, to buy something. And lots of this money, which is flowing around, is chasing enough goods. The problem was, and that was something which was caused by uh, the lockdowns um, 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 around COVID and the pandemic, well, we shut everything down. So it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, they, they call it the Putin inflation. Like uh, there was the invasion um, um, in the Ukraine by, by the Russians and it was just Putin's fault. No, it wasn't. Um, it was just a, um, um, a, a final, a final, final push higher here. So just imagine um, that was at the early 2022. So that was here when inflation, especially here, um, um, and producer prices in this case, but also inflation, the blue line, both lines, had risen dramatically earlier. So here is the invasion from, from Russia and the Ukraine, and it's his final pop higher. Certainly, politicians jump on this, and, and they will tell you, well, this is just because of this guy. He is the bad one here. Well, it was the bad policy, which was which has taken place for over a decade earlier, um, and especially the, the very bad reaction to the pandemic by shutting down the overall economy. Does it make sense or not? I mean, today we know, we didn't know around that time, but long thing short, you um, interrupt the supply chains. That's what you do, right? So you're not producing anything anymore. And now you have lots of money chasing fewer goods and then inflation picks up. And this is exactly what we got to see here. And um, things completely got on, out of control. <clears throat> and then what you will naturally do is certainly you will, you're trying to, to bring inflation down, but it's like a, I sometimes refer to this as kind of a, let's call it ketchup effect. What do I mean by that? You probably remember those um, glass bottles of ketchup. It was probably at least in the 90s, let's say. Um, so 1980s, 1990s, um, at least I remember that really well. Um, so we had French fries and then um, mama came and said, well, here's the ketchup. And then you had this glass bottle and you were just like, doing it, like trying to get ketchup out of it and having something on your French fries. And then nothing happened, nothing happened. And that watch. And then you had this big chunk of ketchup on your French fries, or it was more like it was, it was ketchup with French fries. It wasn't the other way around. Um, 
And this is like how inflation works. It doesn't, it, it doesn't pick up, it doesn't pick up, it doesn't pick And f- once it picks up, it never looks back. And it, it just completely gets out of control. And you need to somehow bring it back under control. How we do that? Well, by cutting, uh, I'm sorry, not by cutting too, cutting QE and reducing your quantitative, um, 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 quantitative easing in this regard, but also by hiking interest rates. So this is usually the way you do that. And this is especially what's, what, what has taken place then from the early uh, 2022 uh, um, um, here, um, when the, the Fed aggressively hiked rates um, in, a, in a very aggressive fashion and which brought equities under pressure. So that's what we saw in, in 2022. So we kept on rising, kept on rising. And once the market realized and anticipated that the central bank, in this case, well, we take the Fed, will hike rates aggressively, that um, resulted in markets being under pressure and being sold aggressively over the course. Because now it's more interesting to um, buy, let's say, let's say bonds who are paying higher interest rates in this regard. But coming back to inflation rate and producer prices and why this matters, well, the thing is that you see that there's continuously a deceleration, but as of recently, and that was what we've seen also on Tuesday, um, inflation came down already. We made this here a topic, and that's that's no surprise. I I think it, it was no surprise because the reason for that was, let's come to the next slide here. We have inflation cooling down um, over the course of the last months. And here, it's not the um, producer prices and uh, the consumer prices anymore. Um, But what we have here is we have in blue the ISM manufacturing paid prices. So this is a subcomponent of this purchasing um, 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 uh, manager index. The PMI, the ISM, which is released each month um, around the time of the non-farm payrolls is released. And um, here, paid prices in the manufacturing sector, but also in the non-manufacturing sector, we saw a massive deceleration over the course of the, let's say, second quarter and then onwards from there over the course of the year 2022. And it was just a matter of time because here, um, it's also that inflation is a lagging indicator. If prices are coming down, paid prices are coming in lower, well, inflation will follow rather sooner than later. And this is exactly what happened. But at the beginning of this month, we saw that there was a, night, a little pickup. So it, it was that, that we, that we, that we um, came down sharply already. But the thing that inflation continues to cool, this might be over right now. This might be over because you see now here that we came for the paid price in the manufacturing sector to a level um, which we've seen here um, around the COVID pandemic, the, the, the panic back then. And um, so with, with prices coming that aggressively down and now picking up, it's only a question of time since or till when inflation will stabilize or see some upticks again. At least this is what I think will happen. And once this happens, the problem will be that the Fed has no further room to um, um, communicate in a more dovish stance or talking rates lower, but in fact needs to make sure we are here to bring inflation down as we promised earlier in our rhetoric. So that being said, and now with also here, something you can't really see, but I have prepared something. Let me just head over. This, by the way, I have to head over here. No, I'm sorry. Okay, this is where I took the charts from. It's from tradingeconomics.com. So great website. It's completely free. And let me just go back here to this inflation rate. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So then let's go here to the United States. And then we go to prices and we go to producer price changes. This is here. So you see, there's a a clear deceleration. It's it's coming down aggressively while it, it shot higher. And this is, by the way, it's... Compared to Germany, for example, it's a, this is a joke um, because that's that's just for fun. Have a look here at uh, producer prices in Germany, uh, what happened there. So, and we go back till the 1950s, okay, like the end of the Second World War. So this is what happened here. We saw we saw producer prices rising to 50 percent. Uh, companies were going out of business. So companies, um, big big companies like Linda, for example, biggest player in the in the DAX, had already seen a shift towards a more, let's say, um, um, US UK 
managed as um, 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 management style, let's say, over the course of the last years, and now finally um, um, called it called it a day and saying, well, we are not we are not willing to be listed in in, in Germany anymore at, at the stock exchange, Xetra, for example. It's a big example, uh, but but things are really horrible here. So bakeries are are going out of business because they can't afford electricity anymore. Uh, the energy is too expensive. We are, we are relying we are relying on um, um, cheap. Um, 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 energy, especially from Russia. That's something which um, we all need to be aware of um, because the um, 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 that Germany uh, is such a strong economic power has lots, if not all, to do with Russian uh, gas, respectively, um, um, cheap um, um, energy from Russia. And uh, so certainly, especially the US in this case, don't want Germany to be uh, too dependent on Russian gas because Germany and Russia together are probably a very strong alliance here. And um, so what you like to see is um, Germany taking probably more expensive energy from the US or from somewhere else in the world, but not necessarily from uh, um, 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 the enemy from the Cold War, let's say. <laughs> That's probably a good way to put it. We don't want to dig too deep into this. Um, you probably have seen all the discussions right now going on around Nord Stream and that stuff. But um, this here, uh, that was like breaking um, 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 uh, the neck of, of, of the German economy, in fact. And and by the way, the politicians here are cheering, funny enough. Um, so especially the Greens and uh, especially the Greens um, are cheering because they hate Germany and they say it the way they do it and they still get lots of support from from the German population I'm not really sure what to think about this really and to be honest I don't really know why I talk about this that way with a with a smile on my face but um that what we've seen here this is really crazy what we've seen in terms of of, of producer prices shooting through the roof and um this is like a, a complete deindustrialization and the thing is that's also something to keep an eye on especially when it comes to investment one of the reasons why I just don't get why German DAX is bought the way it is. I just don't get it. I don't see why uh, German stocks are bought. If I if I had to take a, um, 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 a stance here, I would certainly invest in US stocks or in Indian stocks or in Chinese stocks, but I would never, I would probably even short German stocks, to be honest. I have no idea why German stocks, in this case, the DAX is rising the way it does. Um, but coming back now to to um, 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 the topic here, inflation, uh, respectively, producer prices. So we've seen this this, this shop rise here, and and what I want to make a topic is, previously it was six point two. That was the numbers which were released one month earlier, mid of January, and they were re um um uh, revised higher to six point five percent. Um, coming in at six percent now, you might say, well, we are continuously coming lower here but as you can see we came in above what the market expected and we were revised higher um for the month before which means like that was a too aggressive cool down we've seen here and things um or, or let's say um chances are quite quite high that we are probably about to see at least bottom out here and once we bottom out um there's now, more and more a reason to be skeptical in terms of what the Fed will do. So um, how do I measure what the Fed will do? Um, I measured we are the uh, Fed watch tool. So there's also a tool which is available uh, at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And, oh, I haven't opened it yet. So it's like Fed watch tool, just Google it. And then you can see it here, right at the top. So I will share the link in the, in the chat box. So you can check this out yourself. Uh, we've we've used this several times in the past. And by the way, let me just check here what the market is doing. Okay, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, so what we have here is a column telling you what the um, future market is expecting in terms of the future um, um, target rate. And in this context, you have in March an expectation of a 25 basis point rate hike. We are more interested in what the market expects to be at the end of the year 2023. And here in this regard, you can see that right now there's a um, speculation of over 70% now that the market will stand at 400 to 425 basis point at the end of the year. So that means that right now um, the market is expecting two further hikes, most likely one in 25 basis points in March and another one in June then. 
And um, why is this of of um, um why, why is it noteworthy or why why is this important? Well, it's important because looking back here, scrolling a little lower um, at the Fat Watch tool and and this chart, you can see that one month earlier, you can have it here, seventeenth of January, the speculation here was around ninety eight percent, ninety five minimum, that. We will stand at 475 to 500, even over 80% that we will be at the current level of 450 to 475. That means what just happened within the last month after inflation came in, producer prices, especially the employment situation, the non-farm payrolls earlier this month, the market started to say, well, Okay, we expected or we anticipated a more dovish stance from the U.S. Central Bank, the Fed. Why? Well, very simple. Because um, if, if the if the Fed continues to hike rates the way it does, respectively keep rates at this elevated level for too long, it's negative for the overall economy and it's slowing economy down. Um, people lose their jobs, and thus we will have to to fight that um, um, tendency and um, loosen our monetary policy approach. So we are we are drifting into a recession. There's several reasons to believe that. I mean, look at the inversion of the two-year, ten-year um, yield curve, for example, in the U.S. First, first year. Second is something like six months ago. We made this already a topic here. Um, that was around the the time when the White House and the, the Biden administration tried to um, explain to us that two quarters of negative uh, GDP growth, as we've seen, is not. Um, um, a recession, but in fact, um, it's uh, there's other ways to 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 uh, say whether we're in a recession or not. Well, Harvard Business School tells us something different. Just Google it. But um, the Biden administration tried to 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 explain this to us. One way to say we are in a recession, a classic indication here, is two consecutive months of negative GDP growth. Um, and we have the definition of finding ourselves in a recession. The thing is, with such strong numbers from the job market, but also from the retail sales um, um, perspective, as we've seen earlier uh, that month, and it's probably earlier this month, earlier this week, and on Wednesday, um, consumer and we have retail sales, I think here, there we go, um, coming in at 3%. That was the highest print since 2001, yeah, yeah March 2021. Um, so highest print, as you can see here, last five years, so massive pick higher. The spikes here, these were the stimulus checks handed out from the US government around that time. Um, and now there's no stimulus checks anymore, but we see this pop higher. Probably because, I mean, let's let's um, 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 face it, we, we have probably some kind of early year buying or something like that. Not really sure. Um, however we put this, these are not signs of a recession. So this is not really recessive, what we get to see here. And that being said, then uh, leaves us come to the to the conclusion. Probably there won't be a recession, or it won't be as um, 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 deep as as probably economists planned to or, or sold it to us. Let's say. So long thing short. So um, market is now pricing this out, and um, bringing the expectation back to what the Fed here. Um, told us via the so-called dot plot at the end of the year, December um, 2022, in December 2022, at the end of the year 2022. So you have the dots here, and these dots tell you um, what do FOMC members expect the target rate to be, in this case, at the end of each year. So 2022, certainly they all were fine with um, 425 to 450. This is why there's all dots here. For the rest of the year 2023, respectively, not the rest, but but here in this case, um, 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 at the end of the year, they expect rates to be here. So the majority of um, FOMC members expects the rate to be at 500 to 525 basis points, the target rate. This is interesting because we were significantly below that one month earlier. And even though market participants knew that the fat dot plot looks the way it does here. And we will be very um, 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 interested in seeing how the dot plot looks in one month from now. But that was surprising already. And the market is pricing this out. So putting all this together, how can we formulate the trade hypothesis based on this? Or what does it mean for the market? Well, it means that the US dollar 
should move higher. Respectively, Euro USD should pull in in this case after the strong trend we've seen here. And this is exactly what we get to see. US dollar is stronger. Um, and it's stronger already since earlier this month. So that was some um, here around the Fed, 1st of February. And then the 3rd, especially, we saw this sharper flush lower. We see gold under pressure. That's also something you expect to see. You expect gold being under pressure in an environment where yields rise and such a restrictive stance is priced out. Um, uh, respective, no, the, uh, the dovish stance is priced out. The restrictive um, um, stance is priced back in. That's probably a better way to put it. You see exactly that. Gold is under pressure and, and continuously trading lower. And you can still see here my, my flag. Um, I made a topic last week and you can see, unfortunately, you remember, you probably remember, I had to trade. Um, I had to trade. Um, and unfortunately, I trailed it here to um, 870, as I told you in the webinar last week. So it was a small profit. And then inflation comes in hotter than expected. So hotter than expected, but below last month, let's put it that way. We saw an initial flush lower, and then we're pushed back higher. And that was one reason for me to say, well, what I want to see is a break lower as we had on the non-farm payrolls. We continued to trade lower, as you can see here. And as you can see, the market is trending lower, obviously. Um, but unfortunately, I was spiked out here around 865, if I'm not mistaken. This is where I took out the trade. And then we it took some time, in fact. So it wasn't really uh, right that day on Tuesday, but it was on Wednesday, early hours. And then we traded lower from there. But long thing short, from a pure research perspective, well, you expect gold to be under pressure if yields rise. And now... Have a look here at the S&P. Have a look at, at what the um, um, overall market is showing us. Well, it's holding up quite nicely. There's no such move lower as we've seen in gold or, or um, um, in the US dollar. But we are holding higher. Now, well, we are about to roll over, let's say. It looks very, we are about to, to uh, push lower from here. That's very, very likely, to be honest. And equities are coming in under pressure or under pressure right now. And this is, intraday very interesting because yesterday when we closed that week as we did and based on what i just said we have a prolongated um a weekend in the us and uh there's the president's day and that stuff well if we can make it above these highs in the morning a client of mine asked me and said hey what do you do for, to, for today and i said well if we drop these levels and hope below and this is something we saw already happening in the asian market hours and the european markets were not capable of pushing us higher from here um, I think then we have a good chance to to trade lower from here, especially now if we um, if we if we break the 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 um, European lows, which can be found at around four thousand fifty. And by the way, this is a fifty minute chart. Let's go on a thirty minute. Here you have the four thousand and fifty level. That was the lows from last week on Friday. Um, and if we break these um, um, levels here, if we break below four thousand fifty, I think chances are elevated, quite high, that we um, 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 will continuously trade lower and see at least a retest of 4,000. The thing is, um, now you want to have a, 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 a stock, for example, which is potentially relatively weak, respectively very extended on the upside. It probably is about to see a sharper move lower than the overall market. And I think Tesla is such a candidate. Un unfortunately, right now we have a 50 minute delay here because this is demo account. Um, so this is the closing price from yesterday. But um, right now, let me just check it here. So I think the key level, we are right now trading at this key level. I, I'm, I'm very interested to see if we can um, capture, if we can hold um, um, above a two to uh, 202. Um, this is the price around here. So this is a closing price from yesterday. If we can hold that level, and if we drop below 200 and hold below 200 for today, I would say we have a high chance of a push to at least 190. And I'm sorry, is it right? Yes. Um, and the question will be, will we see a hold a weekly close above that level or won't we? If we don't, chances are high that we will test, or not test, but I think we will test this, this, this trend line. Yes, sure. Um, but if we break this trend line and this support around 190, I think a deeper corrective move seems very likely. So it could be that we get to see a flush to these levels and bounce from there, but make a lower high and then roll over and probably see a deeper corrective move down to 180, probably 175. Um, but, and this is the thing, 
exactly what I want to see, especially if I if I think that overall uh, Tesla has now found a bottom um, after after this aggressive sellout, especially over the month, the course of the month of, of December on the downside. And I want to see a, a corrective move down to these levels. One, yeah, 175, 170, let, let's see, 180 in this region. And then continues to buy in into a position for longer a trade, especially aiming, first of all, for um, it to recapture the round, that's around 230. Yeah, around 230, let's say. So this, this region here. Um, and this Let's insert here a line, objects. Da, 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 da. I'm sorry, it's an indicator. It's a trend indicator and it's a moving average. So 200 SMA, perfect. So, and then making it back above the 200 SMA. And again, coming back, why, why is it of interest? Because there's a high gross margin in an electric vehicle market, which is about to continue to rise. You probably have heard that there's now um, 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 the plan to prove it. Um, uh, Fossil fuel cars, so classic cars, um, to 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 um, um, offer them to the European market from 2035 onwards. So around 10 years from now, uh, complete electrification taking place. And again, Tesla is the market leader, not just in Europe. We will see similar trends happening in the US. I'm very um, 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 very sure that this will happen confident and if this happens then um i think tesla has a has a great chance here in this in this regard um to 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 really outperform massively the market and you want to scale in still at the most attractive levels as possible especially as after such a run and thus such a drop down lower to 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 um scale into a position seems um interesting let's see. let's put it that way so that's it for today um, coming back to the presentation and the final slide in this regard. So if you like what you saw, please leave a thumb up here in the YouTube channel. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. I hope you um, um, had as much fun listening to what I presented as uh, I had um, um, fun to, to present it to you respectively to prepare everything around this. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Admirals directly. Ask um, um, your questions to the customer support, especially check out the website for downloading a demo. I highly um, I recommend especially downloading the um, um, uh, add-on. That's the word I was using. Uh, I'm, I'm missing. Um, so the add-on, so-called Supreme add-on, especially for the mini terminal for more active traders. And um, that's it for my end. So all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. Talk to you again next week and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.